Yeah. So, today uh, let us continue the discussions on the data flow diagrams. In the previous class, if you recall, uh, we were discussing about data flow diagrams or in short DFDs and uh, I have told you that essentially in a data flow diagram, uh, we have four symbols, the process symbol, the data store symbol, uh, the data flow symbol and the entity symbol. All right. Now, I was also uh, telling you that the data flow diagrams can be broadly classified into physical So, I was telling you there are two levels of classification. On one level of classification, we have the physical data flow diagrams versus the logical data flow diagram. On uh, other kind of classification, basically the leveling of uh, data flow diagrams, we have the context diagram, we have the top level data flow diagram and the detailed data flow diagram of each bubble or each process which is involved in the top level data flow diagram. Now, uh, the physical versus logical data flow diagram, basically the this physical you know this is uh, one can say that uh, the physical data flow diagram you can get uh, when you actually uh, visit a particular place and observe who is doing these data transformations, what data is being taken and uh, where the data transformation is taking place. Is it okay? So, the basic question about physical data flow diagrams who, where and what. That means, who is processing the data, where the data is being processed and what is being processed. Identify this. So, uh, let us uh, try to understand this. We will come to logical data flow diagram because uh, this requires understanding of the physical data flow diagram first. Once we understand the physical data flow diagram, uh, by making use of the uh, physical data flow diagram, we can actually uh, do or obtain the logical data flow diagram. Essentially, we take out the physical processes out of that or in other words, if some people are processing or uh, uh, it was being done in a particular sequence, right? it was done with uh, certain things in mind. but instead of the people, instead of the file movement, instead of the uh, manual system, we just uh, try to get the logical processes out of it. That means, remove people, remove location and uh, we develop what is known as a logical data flow diagram. All right? So, we will uh, discuss logical data flow diagram little later. Let us try to see what is happening in a physical data flow diagram. So, to begin with, let us say processing of
let us take processing of checks in a banking situation. Usually what happens, uh, we have let us say we have a clerk 1 to begin with we have a clerk 1 and who is the entity? The entity is a customer. The entity customer presents a check to the clerk 1. All right. Now, what this clerk 1 is actually doing one when he gets the check? First and uh, foremost, he is verifying, he is verifying the check. Now, after it is uh, verifying, suppose it finds that uh, the check is not proper or it is not a check at all, it is something else or whatever, then he returns <coughs> the check. So, this is rejected check. So, this is uh, one activity verify. Now, uh, there are two more activities, one is a check balance, all right. So, say he checks the balance. Now, what may happen? Suppose the balance is not proper, he does not have enough money in the bank, the check cannot be issued, he can reject the check. Obviously, it is not always so simple, it depends on bank to bank, some bank may not check the balance at initial stage, it may be done little later, but then it becomes an offence because your check is bouncing. All right. So, after uh, balance is check, uh, checked, then you issue token. All right. So, these are the three broad activities which are. <coughs> now, you see it is easy to make a common mistake while drawing a data flow diagram, we usually associate sometimes these arrows with some activities, all right. Suppose in a as if in a network diagram, project network diagram, uh, suppose we write issue rejected check or give token, issue token, presents check. See all these are wrong, please remember what I am trying to say that customer to clerk 1, on this arrow suppose you write present check, then you are wrong. Please recall this is a data flow diagram, what is flowing is data, when this data is flowing under what conditions that we are not modeling. You see, there might be a physical flow, but just looking at this diagram, you do not understand that physical flow, which activity is first, whether rejects check is first, issuing token is first or giving check is first, you do not know. How you have obtained this? Basically, you have gone to a bank, you have observed some customer, you see this can be drawn by pure observation, you see the customer is coming you see some clerk is there and the clerk is doing what? He is sometimes verifying the check, sometimes he is issuing token, sometimes he is checking balance. So, by observing the clerk or discussing with the clerk or by observing the activity, all right, you can obtain this much of the diagram, fine. Now, we have to move little further.
say there is a second clerk. Now, obviously, when he is checking balance, he cannot do it out of nothing. So, he has to access <coughs> the customer account file. Now, this need not be an online computerized updated file. The customer account file can actually be a manual, it could be a register, it could be a manual process. Is it all right? So, he does it. Then what he provides to the second clerk is the check plus token number. You see token is one thing, the token number is something else, all right. It is not token, it is the number. Basically, he writes the token number on the check, all right. Then what the second clerk does? Second clerk verifies signature, signature, right. So, we are assuming a standard process in a our bank may be, but some other bank may not be like this. Now, he verifies signature. Now, after he has verified signature, he may actually reject the check again. How he does it? Again by looking at a signature record, all right. Again at a signature record, all right. Now, after this, we have the cashier. So, we have the check plus token number. We can write actually uh, verified check. Actually, you see since the data is getting transformed. So, at each stage we should not be having exactly same thing. If there is no transformation, then uh, you know what is happening, why the process exists. The very fact that there is a process, uh, the idea is the process is doing something. What it is doing? We have a check, now we have check plus token number, but not only just check, verified check. The verified means account verified. You see this is account verified check and this is signature verified check, right and then cashier. So, what the cashier should be presented with? The cashier should be presented with the token. Now, what the cashier should do first? Again, verify token, right. So, he should verify token, then after verifying token, he may reject, there may be a rejected, I am not drawing it, but there could be another set of rejection. Say, it may happen that you might have lost your token and somebody else have brought that token, all right. Or you might have lost your token and uh, brought another token. So, you may not be allowed. So, he has to verify the token and if he has some doubt, he may again ask some questions, all right. Now, after this uh, token is verified, then what else he has to do? He has to give the money, update the 
balance all right and uh, so he has to update balance then he should also update accounts now we may show it but it doesn't make much difference here although this is why you have gone to the bank uh, the cash part <laughs> right <laughs> but the point is if we are not thinking of uh, an automated teller machine if you are thinking of an automated teller machine well and good all right otherwise if you are thinking the cash uh, giving will be still a manual process if you are not thinking of uh, going for automating the cash uh, giving part as well, then we may not even show it the cash part. Please understand uh, as I said that this is the physical part of the process. The cash although is more looking more like a document, but actually it is a material all right it is not a document and in information system we are actually discussing documents rather than the material. We assume the material is there actually for the material part of the system we must have a good physical system available that is really not much of a concern definitely concern, but not that much of a concern for information system development right. Say for example, if the cash is too bulky how to handle how much big should be cashier's cage these are not information system questions these are physical system questions and you may have your physical system analysis and design separately done and this is probably one of the jobs of industrial engineers is it not now after this you see as you, as i as i uh, have written here update balance update account so usually what happens he updates again the customer account file. I am drawing the arrow two ways because uh, you have to retrieve the record first. Have to retrieve the record first and then there is a concept usually they use what is known as day book. What is a day book? Day book is actually a secondary check a transaction which he updates that means what he has handled during the day all right so uh, if we just keep customer account only he updates customer account and gives the money now as think due to whatever reason the database gets corrupted or something happens or the updation did not take place properly if you do not separately keep the transaction detail also in the day book sometimes uh, it will be difficult to find out what has happened and also the audit requirements says that you have to record each transaction also separately all right because uh, you must remember uh, this customer account is like a master file in a master file any transaction that happens is uh, already updated all right by looking at the master file you do not know whether the master file is updated or not updated and the problem is if a transaction has not happened by updating it twice is not the answer is it not suppose your bank has 100 rupees and you have deposited 20 rupees now suppose you are not sure whether the updation has taken place or not taken place if you update it again it will not be 120 it might be 140 as well if the earlier one was successful then it will be updating twice updating twice is not the answer all right that is why transaction image is often kept either separately or as a part of the database itself in in uh, many uh, you know modern database systems you need not keep a separate day book 
as you update the customer account, it automatically keeps a transaction image. Right? So, that becomes little redundant. So, this is our physical data flow diagram. From the nature of the physical data flow diagram, you can must have understood by now that these physical data flow diagram uh, development basically requires identifying the processes, basically people where are they, the processes actually are people or locations, people or locations and uh, then uh, identify individual uh, thing that the people actually do. So, this is our first stage that is a physical data flow diagram. Now, from here what we need to do now is remove people, all right. Remove people, remove locations, remove the uh, details that we have already put. For example, uh, clerk 1, clerk 2, cashier, remove this. All right. Then you find out only the logical processes. What are the logical processes? Verify check, check balance, issue token, verify signature, verify token, update balance, update account. So, these are the logical processes or the logical work which have been actually been done. All right. Identify them, put them into the logical sequence that will be our logical data flow diagram clear. So, please draw this logical data flow diagram. So, we can see uh, the first part between customer and uh, the verify check 
we have we issue the check and uh, as you issue the check then we may reject the check all right then verify check is the first activity and from verify check we rejected check we give back to the customer then balance again if balance is not proper we give the rejected check then we issue the token and token is given for checking balance we need to use the customer account file then uh, for verifying signature we need to sorry this way we need to look at the signature record and this for update balance again we require customer account both ways because we update it and finally your uh, update account we require the day book Then after uh, verifying signature also the check can be rejected. Then your uh, after the take is uh, you know uh, token is verified you can present the token here and you can give the cash sometimes if you think going back all the way to the customer may be a little too much you can also uh, draw another customer somewhere else right it's not necessary that everything we have to relate back to the same entity if you feel the diagram becomes too cluttered uh, to do that we can always draw customer once again somewhere here same thing we have done with customer account we have drawn the customer account here we have also drawn customer account here right we have drawn it two times so this is an example of a logical data flow diagram so as a this is our physical dfd customer clerk 1 clerk 2 cashier and we have the various processes and we have used these processes here in the logical data flow diagram all right so all these verify check check balance issue token verify signature verify token update balance update account they are all present here so what we have basically done in the process we have identified the activities we have identified the flows of data and we have identified the transformations and while so doing we have while so doing uh, we have identified the uh, or we have built the connections look at this the connection between these bubbles or the processes are uh, only in terms of data not in terms of logic basically this makes the entire diagram very loosely coupled right so the we have been see the beauty of the data flow diagram or the good thing about data flow diagram is that it is a loosely coupled diagram what do you mean by uh, loosely coupled diagram that means the coupling between one process to the other is only through data you see the people are already removed the constraint that we have placed upon ourselves 
because you must remember that moment you put a physical system constant on you, it becomes little fixed, it becomes little fixed, all right. Say for example, uh, but physical system constraints are very difficult because it creates a lot of fixed ideas in people's mind. For example, when I used to be a student and uh, we used to go to those uh, movies in Netaji auditorium, all the you know our hostel students used to sit in the same place. And to my surprise, even 20 years later, I do not know really, but I guess the my hostel students are sitting in the same place. RK. So, you see uh, the RK people are still sitting in the same place where they used to sit 20 years ago. And uh, most likely all the usual sounds and usual things they are making <laughs> even 20 years down the line. Now, you see it is not, uh, now suppose 20 years ago or the students who have passed before me uh, even 20 years ago or 30 years ago, if they would have done things little differently, if the RK hall people sat in the movie hall instead of that particular point, maybe at some other point, maybe today's RK hall people would have sat there only. See the point I am trying to make that uh, once a tradition is set, it is very difficult to break that uh, tradition, very difficult even if you wish, sometimes. So and usually it always happens with physical systems. You see most of you who are coming to this class, you are more or less sitting on similar positions, alright. Now even if you wish, no I will not sit here, let me go to totally different place, another location of the class. You see, you have some resistance somewhere in you. This resistance is, uh, you know, probably a nature of human being that uh, we be have a little bit of fixed ideas when you, we affix ourselves to some physical systems, alright. So, if you think in the uh, physical data flow diagram that these Clark 1 he sits in one corner of the room, this Clark 2 he sits in some distance away, the cashier sits some distance away. That is the picture which is also painted in our mind when we are the analysts. See I am the analyst, I go to the bank, I find the clerk is sitting in one place, clerk, another clerk is sitting in another place, the cashier is sitting in another place. This becomes ingrained in my mind, any system I think of. I cannot get out of these uh, fixed ideas very easily. To think about or nothing will be there, all these things will be replaced by a single ATM is very difficult to even think. See ATM is something we already know, so it is not difficult to think, alright. But think about. Uh, old payroll systems, think about old payroll systems, you know just think that uh, anybody who has seen the old way of developing payroll software, the people used to sit, a large number of clerical people, they used to sit in a big room, alright. And uh, there are tables after tables arranged in some sequence, somebody is calculating gross pay, somebody net pay, somebody some kind of deductions somebody putting them together, somebody writing a ledger, a full you know room full of activity, alright. To think about that this entire room of activity will not be there and instead you can think of an automated activity through computer is very difficult until unless you think differently. You keep getting back to the fixed ideas, alright. This is why the physical data flow diagram, if you unless, until and unless you remove the locations and the people, you cannot start getting ideas, alright. That is the basic idea that physical DFD is a tool which helps you in get these logical processes, identify what each clerk is doing, alright, put them in a diagram, that is physical data flow diagram. Then you forget this diagram. And then forget the people also, identify the logical things and the sequences. Now your that 
physical part is over, you do not have to remember who is where. For that matter, probably you give this diagram to a new analyst who has not gone to the bank. If he has understood the process properly, he has not seen the bank, he does not know where the clerk 1, clerk 2 cashier, what each one of them was doing, how they are linked. He knows this, what are the logical processes that are to be done. All right. So, that is the uh, thing about logical data flow diagram. Now, after we have identified the logical data flow diagram, we have to now think of the a particular important concept which is known as human machine interface. You see human machine interface actually is a direct outcome of what amongst them will be uh, computerized, what amongst them will remain manual. This again uh, is not a, uh, not a what do I say that uh, uh, easy process or uh, unique process. What exactly means by unique process is uh, there is no unique suggestion. We may have a number of alternate suggestions, all right. So, we may have even alternate proposals and each proposal may be feasible with different solutions. Suppose you want a complete automation, one kind of solution, one kind of technical, physical, operational feasibility one kind of costing that will re be required to develop the system or maintain the system. If you want to keep it partly manual, another kind of situation. Think of, let us say, the kind of uh, automation that uh, most of the banks have already done, forgetting the ATM for the time being, all right. Then you will find certain activities such as verify the physical check, verify the physical check actually is not automated, all right. The check balance could be automated, issue token not automated, but if you are thinking of uh, only single window system, single window system, then the token itself is not required. So, we may as well forget issue token and uh, verify token. Signature, the verify signature you may uh, like to automate, all right. You may like to automate or may not like to automate. Uh, then update balance, update account you can definitely automate. Okay, before we come to single window kind of a system, uh, let us try to think of a two window system. Let us have the token anyway, all right. Let us have the token anyway, let us try to put it exactly what we see now in our state bank and when you want to automate, then you see uh, we can basically have, in fact the token also maybe if you can make some special paper kind of thing, it can also be partly automated, it can also be partly automated instead of a metal token you may actually give some kind of a slip, which is a special kind of paper which cannot be copied, etcetera, etcetera. All right, think of this. Now, what we may can do therefore, uh, let us put it in a circle. See, and we put another circle here. Alright. So, these two circles actually are can be called as our subsystems. So, we may call this as subsystem 1 
and subsystem 2. Okay. So, we can uh, see that thinking of from the logical data flow diagram, uh, if we want to basically uh, computerize it as a two window system, as a two window system, we can keep, we can keep uh, you know two window systems and in the two window system, the two subsystems we have defined. The first one is basically checking balance, verifying signature and issue token and the second one update balance and update account at the cashier's end. All right. So, let us just quickly write them down what we have said right now that draw physical DFD So, determine levels of automation, examine each process. Each process may be automated, manual, semi automated, all right. Then find find many alternate solutions and package them. See, uh, for a given solution, <laughs> identify subsystems so draw physical data flow diagram identify the logical processes draw the logical data flow diagram determine levels of automation examine each process all right uh, identify whether the process will be automated or uh, semi automated or the process will be uh, left manual, find many alternate solutions package them. So, actually what you are sending uh, package them into a proposal. So, after your uh, data, data flow diagram analysis, basically you are presenting a proposal this is we are still at the system analysis stage all right uh, we are obtaining a proposal this proposal has got many alternate solutions and one has to choose between them this is where the management comes in you make a presentation these are the uh, ideas if you go for this these are the feasibility considerations these are the operational feasibility considerations all right. Say for example, if you give ATM now and make it the only choice in our state bank, there will be many users who are maybe 
ordinary villagers who may not be able to apply the system properly. And probably ATM will be not meaningful uh, for very small customers. Say a person who does just want some 100 rupees, it may not be feasible to have a sophisticated ATM for this kind of users. All right. The cost of maintaining this operation may not be you know, good enough for a country like ours. See, you must remember one of the major reason for automating the whole thing is where you do not have enough people. Most of the times in the western countries, they do not have people because they do not have people, they have to automate whether they like it or not. Whereas in our country, our strength lies in uh, huge workforce. All right. So, it is not always uh, just because you we will computerize, blindly computerizing is not the answer. You have to examine whether computerizing is really required and is, is it financially beneficial to the company. Cost of development and maintenance should be offset by the benefits that you are getting. If there are no, again many a time we feel that by computerizing we actually can uh, uh, you know reduce people, we can actually uh, improve upon the process. But what really happens before the computerized system is fully implemented, actually the number of people rises, cost rises and everything is on the way up till it is completely implemented. So, these points we must remember. Then we have to identify subsystems. See, uh, while you are identifying subsystems, you have to think of the human machine interface. This is an important topic, we will take it up some other day. The human machine interface, yes, human machine interface, what really happens? See, we have our subsystems. Now, these subsystems are actually, uh, you may say that uh, they are some sort of islands of computerization, some sort of islands of computerization. We have say SS1, SS2, but in between SS1 and SS2, SS1 is probably be used by desk clerk and SS2 will be probably used by the cashier. All right. So, what should be the user interfaces? What should be the user interfaces? The user interfaces between SS1 and SS2, what sort of, inter see moment you, if you make fully automated, everything is fine. There is nothing else much to think of, only think of the end user or the customer. But if you are having, let us say an uh, user interface where, you know, apart from customer, you also have people, desk clerk, cashier, etcetera then what the clerk has to do and what the system has to do? These must be properly identified and that is actually known as user interfaces. So, all the user interfaces must be properly developed. There are two manuals, usually they are, they are developed for this purpose, we will discuss them later. One is known as operations manual, another is known as users manual. You know, these users manual and operations manual, they should be part and parcel of this. Okay, so, we we'll stop here today and uh, we will continue with this and also see some case studies in the next class. Oh, by the way, uh, okay, stop here.